right, we're back. A quick walkthrough of my chart setup. And you guys obviously are free to copy it and use it. Um, a lot of people are still looking for the buy and sell labels and the algo and that kind of stuff, but you don't need the buy and sell labels. You just need a, a good clean chart and some good trading instincts. But as long as your chart is set up so that you can scroll through multiple tickers and be able to look at it quickly and identify your, your levels and uh, places of, of low risk entry points, and that's all you really need. But that being said, I think there are people that want this particular layout, uh, which is really just, I've, I just tried to mimic uh, some of the premium algo services like AI signals and you know trade at ease and uh, there's another one called Trendbot. They all basically just look like this and they might have the buy and sell label, but it's essentially, it's essentially this. Okay, so, and I'm, I'm looking at paying someone on Fiverr to basically just write this up as a script, just one script that I can publish in TradingView and, and then maybe put some buy and sell labels in there. Uh, but I would have to have someone write that script for me. So I'm looking to hire someone on Fiverr to do it maybe for, I don't know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks or something. So uh, that would be nice to be able to just have it in TradingView so people can just go download it whenever they want. But... Nonetheless, here's how you set it up until we get to that point. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is get your, your basic chart settings correct. And so uh, that's gonna be coming in here. First thing you wanna do, sorry, is just make sure you've got your candle set on Heiken Ashi, which is right there. Then you wanna come to this gearbox, chart properties, and mess with your color settings. Just make the body, border, and wick of your symbol the same. Uh, check mark show real prices of the price scale because the Heiken Ashi, if you're trying to uh, look at the price of the Heiken Ashi, the candle is actually not where the price is a lot of the time. So you want over here, you want this scale to be showing where the price actually is to give you a better reading. Okay, uncheck all this. You don't need any of that. Make sure you have extended hours on and you can mess with your pre and post market uh, settings here. So what it'll do is uh, it will show your pre and post mark market setups here. Let's just go look at Tesla. It'll highlight them. So you can have these whatever you want. There you go. So there's the pre markets and then regular day is here. So uh, next go and uh, add on Oh, and then coming in here, go to appearance, excuse me, and then change the background to just solid black. All right. And then you want to take off these grid lines. We don't want too many lines on here that don't mean anything to us. So we're taking off the vertical grid lines. You just basically take the opacity and make it zero. Same thing for the horizontal ones. We don't care about all those lines. We just want our own lines on here. So make those zero as well. And then the scales text, if you make the background black and you have this black, you won't be able to see the numbers and that kind of thing. So just make those white. All right. Uh, next, uh, you don't really care about the rest of this stuff. You can mess with the margins and that kind of thing. That's up to you. Uh, in here, basically, you just want to have these check marks, symbol, show open market status, indicator titles, indicator art arguments, and then the background check marked. So uh, that would be the basic setup, so the fundamental layout here so that we get a nice uh, clean chart. Next is adding this DTR versus ATR. So you just type in DTR here, add that on there. And uh, what I did was I changed the bars right. This defaults to minus five, so I made it minus one because you're just going to mess with the location of this. If you change it up, it just moves it. So as you see, you know, it just depends on where you want it. So I decided I just wanted it right above the price action. Uh, you can leave everything else the same. You can leave all that the same. 
Then go find the OHLC, which is just the one by NAND86. Add that in there and come into the settings here and you can mess with your color coding uh, of everything. You don't need the hourlies on there and you don't need the previous days unless you want them, of course. I don't use the previous days. I just care about the previous week and previous uh, month. And so my previous week is gonna be set up with yellow color coded and then I change everything to circle. Okay. Um, and so all the previous high, low, closes, and oh, and then this week's open are all gonna show up yellow circle lines here and then they're gonna be labeled here with large labels. You can change this, large label, and it'll show the price as well. So just looking at the chart, you can see here with Tesla bounced off last month's, or this month's open of 662. So we retraced the entire month's move. We retraced right back, we double bottomed for the month. It was easy to read that that bottom there because of that. And it bounced, it, it took everybody out and then bounced right off of it. Now it's headed higher. Uh, then you got last week's low, you got last month's close, you got last week's close, last week's, or this week's open. So we opened at 814. And then this is where we traded to. So we traded 200 points lower from this week. And then uh, you got uh, last week's high. So um, let me make sure actually before, because it's I believe it's this week's open. This is this week. Is that where we opened? Let's double check that real quick, because gosh darn it. Let's go to the daily here. We really open here. So yeah, that was last week. So this is gonna be last week's open. In February, we opened way up here. So this is gonna be last month's open. Okay, good. So now we clarified that because I was because of the the settings doesn't show previous here. I thought I assumed it was this week's, but it doesn't matter. It's just a level that will be traded that you want on your chart. So it's, everything's gonna be the previous week. So previous month high, previous week high, so on and so forth. And uh, you'll see those levels be traded off of pretty much on every chart. Uh, Fibonacci's, adding the Fibonacci's, pretty easy. You're just going to add pivot points, standard. So just click it four times just to put them in there four times. Come in here in the settings. You're going to change type from traditional to Fibonacci. Uncheck historical check mark daily there come into your style set up your color coding i make orange my color code and then i change the opacity because i don't want i don't want too many lines on here that are that are just too like in your face so i i change the opacity way down just because i want the level there but i don't really need it to be like super solid you know like it just kind of bothers me a little bit so I turn it way down on each one of them, make them all orange. And then I make this middle line, the pivot, make that the thickest one just because that's a bigger resistance and support level. So then these um, these minor resistance and supports, at least for the daily. Same thing for weekly, make that yellow, change the opacity way down. You don't need them uh, so high. I'm just kind of random with the way I do it. Just doesn't really need to be perfect as far as that goes. So do that with all of those. Like with weekly, you need to go change that to weekly. Same thing, Fibonacci, uncheck, weekly. Same thing for monthly, change that to monthly. And then for the same thing for yearly, just change it to yearly. And then you'll have nice uh, um, automatically generated levels and targets uh, that you can, you don't need to mess around with trying to draw trend lines and find you know, support resistance lines on your own they will already be there and there'll be levels that other people are trading. Um, that's what you want to be looking for. And then uh, add in volume profile visible range. So click that, which is up in the indicator section. Come in here, uh, change the row size to 48. Leave that at 70. Volume profile check marked. Uncheck the point of control. You don't care about that. I don't. And then up volume, make it gray. Down volume, make it gray. And then value area up, make it green. Put the opacity down. You don't really need it so 
so bright, and then the value area down is red. Again, the opacity, we don't need it so in our face. And then there you go, you got your volume profile there. And then you need to add in one last indicator, which is the um, intraday volume profile, which I promise is in here. Oh, sorry, intra bar. Jeez. There it is. Okay, so type in intra bar. You don't even need to type in volume. Intra bar. Uh, click that on there. That's going to be your volume. So you're going to have volume on the bottom for the, each candle. You're going to be able to see visibly the buy and sell uh, volume happening for each candle. So you can start seeing a trend and uh, of the volume as it's uh, you know what kind of volume it is and then you have your volume for your levels as well so uh, it'll give you that extra that extra little clarity on a certain type of level and uh, whether it will be a good resistance or support and uh, whether you should take profits and that kind of thing and so there you go uh, so now you got your daily trading range and average trading range and your RVOL automatically on your chart without having to do anything extra. You've got automatic pivots. You've got your automatic previous weekly highs, lows, opens, and closes for monthly and weekly generated here. And you got volume profile for each candle, and you got volume profile for each level. And it's all there for you, already built in. The only thing now, so once you have this set up, the only thing you really need to do, oh, almost forgot one of the most important things. Sorry about that, moving average ribbon. Make sure you add in this moving average ribbon, which will be in there as well. Uh, you can leave everything the same except for change the theme. Just change it to one. And you can mess around if you like the EMA or the weighted moving average. Uh, you can change the source as well. I've messed around with maybe making the source a, a VWAP or that kind of thing. I just like close SMA and just leave all, all the other stuff the same. Check mark color option. And there you go. There's your there's your trend uh, to follow. So the only thing I would say you need to make sure you do once you have this set up is learn how to re learn how to read Heiken Ashi charts. Heiken Ashi. So I would go to I would just Google it and um, look up some like a chart school you know, learning what the calculation is. Uh, we can go over that, looking at what kind of uh, what kind of setups you can get. There's uh, quite a few different um, patterns that emerge from Heiken Ashi that you won't see with the Japanese candlestick. And so, uh, just go to this website if you want to and and find it. The calculation is pretty interesting. It's just using a bunch of averages of the uh, open highs, lows, and closes, and then uh, you know printing a, a candlestick based on that. So uh, it's gonna be a better indicator of a trend. And uh, I'll, I'll go over a couple trades that I made today based using this. Uh, so today we were messing around with GME early on. Uh, where did I, I, I traded this little spot right here. Yeah, so it came back down. I saw this candle had closed through a monthly open. And what else is that right there? I can't even tell. It's got two things printed there. So it looks like it's like a weekly high and a monthly open at the same time. So you had a double level there. And so I saw it close right above. So I was looking for an entry point right in here, thinking that the next level would be 140. And, and then above that possibly 211 which was last month's close so uh, you can see I, I bought in here and instantly and this level didn't even matter it just ripped right to 200 pretty much right to 200 uh, so uh, that was a nice little trade right there um, you know it was just 10 shares it wasn't nothing it was like 600 bucks but it was it wasn't much and then I was looking at this I was kind of busy but I was looking at the chart here and I saw this um, starting to come curl right on top of that that pivot point this yellow line which is going to be a weekly pivot point 
I saw them trying to curl that right in there and uh, when I saw this candle print I figured this thing was probably going to keep ripping higher so I was thinking about getting another entry here around 130 after I got up I got out up here about 180 and I was going to get another entry here and, and see if we can ride it back up again but I was I was busy at the time so I didn't I didn't get that so that would have been a really another nice little trade there um, and then Tesla again we're still trading Tesla uh, we uh, we were in we were in calls from yesterday closed them out uh, as soon as possible uh, for a nice nice little profit and then and then uh, waited I had to wait quite a while for this thing to reverse but I saw this candle here so the Helkin Ashi gives you a nice little trend uh, you see the uh, it almost like teleports up like all of a sudden you're like you're like oh no the the ground the sky is falling it's it's gonna crash but you're above this pivot point here so you're already pretty bullish because it's gonna act as support and uh, you had this candlestick that just kind of warped uh, to the middle here and so uh, I was looking for a buy here I was waiting for a green stick to show up and uh, as soon as I saw one I got in calls again uh, and uh, wrote it up. You know, I, I didn't really wait till it came to 740. I mean, it was already kind of, it already had to break through this level again, which I was yesterday. If you watched a video yesterday, I was hoping that it would open up above that level. It tried several times, uh, but it couldn't. So I was like, well, maybe if it can get through again. So I took profits around this area just because it couldn't break it in pre market and went a little bit higher. And then I was looking for a bounce right off of that level again and uh, waited for it to come down and uh, started looking for calls again here in this general zone. And I, I figured that is, with Tesla, they're gonna try and make an attempt for this uh, middle pivot line, which this white line is the middle pivot for the month of February. So I figured they're gonna try and make a setup here, or try to make a run to try to clear this level. So for tomorrow on Tesla, I'm waiting to see if they can open it above that pivot point. If they can, then I will be looking for a bounce off that pivot. Off that pivot, or if it comes down here and looks like it's trying to bounce again off the 725, that's where you wanna uh, enter. Those are low risk entry points here. And if you wanna make these trades tomorrow, I would highly recommend keeping an eye out for this, these two zones right here for potential bounce zones. If it opens up way up here, which I doubt, I mean, I. I I, I doubt it's going to open up above 753, but I could see it opening up here in the 740s and then looking for bounces here uh, to move higher. 762 is going to be huge. So I would really like, just for a day trade, I would like it to open up here and puncture, really scare everybody by puncturing the 741 and come right down back to the 725 and then start its move higher again. And uh, and then rip through, and hopefully potentially can close around 762. That would be a nice 40 point move there, uh, potentially 30 point 40 point move that you could play, versus opening here, bouncing here, and then getting stuck here at 762, which it, you know only gives you 20 points. So I'm I'm open for a bigger, more volatile move. We'll see what we get. Hopefully it doesn't just stay sideways, which is very possible after two uh, nice ripper days. It's possible it comes in here and just kind of chops it, chops us around a little bit. So we'll have to wait and see what the day looks like. Uh, but anyways, that's it. Hopefully this setup video helps you get this chart looking the way it is. I'm going to leave the link in the description. I don't plan on changing this one. So if you take this link and copy it, all you do is paste it in your browser, this link here. Uh, I have sharing on, so you should be able to come in here, just make a copy, and it will copy all the indicators as I have them here. So if not, if you have an issue with that, you got the setup video, so just pause and, and take your time and get it set up the way you want to if you want to use this. So hopefully that helps. Uh, good luck trading, and uh, like, subscribe, comment. I appreciate uh, every, all the new followers, and uh, hopefully this stuff helps you guys. Peace.